Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making something called lamingtons. These are an Australian favourite uh, originating from Brisbane in Australia many many years ago and basically it's a, a cake and I'm using a batter cake uh, and then traditionally it's coated with a chocolate frosting, chocolate icing and then with coconut um, all over it and they are very very good. I've also made a variation which is instead of using the chocolate icing I've used some strawberry jelly or jello um, and coated the cake in that and then put the coconut on top of that. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's get on with the recipe. Now some cakes, uh, some lamingtons use um, a sponge cake mixture and others use uh, different mixtures. I'm going to go with a butter cake mixture and the reason for that is that I want the cake to be slightly denser um, in order that it doesn't break up when I'm coating it in the various fillings. So more of a Madeira type cake mixture. For that I'm going to use 112 grams of butter, 120 millilitres of milk, 200 grams of all, uh, plain flour, 200 grams of caster sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, two medium eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And so we'll mix those ingredients together but first I have the oven preheating at 180 Celsius, that's 350 Fahrenheit um, and I have taken an 8 inch cake tin square and I've greased it and I've lined the base with uh, some parchment paper. What I've also done is to line the outside with some brown paper, double thickness. Now I've done that uh, simply because I often find that cakes in my oven tend to rise in the centre so they cook quickly on the outside because the, the tin gets hot and so the, the cake will uh, bake and adhere to the tin and then the centre rises up. By putting the paper on the outside I'm hoping to slow down the cooking of the outside so that any rise is fairly even. You don't have to do it and often people don't do it so it's, it's just something that I want to do. So the first thing to do with our cake mixture is to cream our butter to get it nice and soft that's already quite soft so then we can uh, add our sugar and cream that until it's nice and fluffy. You may need to scrape down the sides so I will scrape down the sides at this point just to get all the sugar incorporated and then we'll beat it for a couple of minutes make it nice and fluffy get some air into it So then I'm going to add the vanilla extract, give that a quick whiz and then we'll add the eggs one at a time. Now don't worry if um, the, the, the mixture starts to curdle 
um, because as soon as the flour hits it, it will all come back together again. And as always, scrape down the bowl. We want to get that egg incorporated into all of the mixture. With it, the mixture nice and airy now, I'll just scrape it again. And then we're going to add the flour and the milk um, and the baking powder and the baking soda. But we put the baking powder, sorry, the baking powder and the salt. We put the baking powder and the salt into the flour we just mix it up a little bit like that. And then we're going to put about a third of the flour into the, the mixture. And mix it round and then we'll add half the milk, then another third of the flour, then the other half of the milk, and then the last third of the flour. Half the milk. So our mixture's almost ready. I just scrape this excess flour down and give it a little further mix. And then it's ready to go into our tin. Okay, that's all nicely combined. So, what we're going to do now is just scrape that down one more time and then we're going to put that into our cake tin.
So that's reasonably level, I think. And then we're going to bake that in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes until a skewer poked into the centre comes out clean. Then we'll let it cool down for a few minutes in the tin before we turn it out and we'll let it cool completely before we go on to the next stage. So I'll be back with you when the cake has cooled down completely. Okay, so our cake is baked and it's cooled down and because I'm going to do two coverings for it I'm going to cut it in half and I, I've let this cool down completely and I've actually um, refrigerated it as well for a little while just to make it a little bit firmer I'm going to take um, half of that off and put it on there and I'm going to put the other half back in the fridge for the time being. So what I want to do, I'm not going to worry about these edges at all, I'm going to cut this into eight. Now what I have, I'm going to make a chocolate um, icing for it and I'm going to try and make a, a strawberry jelly covering for it as well. So for the chocolate icing, um, and this is for eight, I have 225 grams of icing sugar in a bowl, I have 60 millilitres of milk, I have 20 grams of cocoa powder and 22 grams of butter. Now I'm going to put all of those in a bowl on the heat and I'm going to um, mix those until they form uh, a nice liquid. Then I'm going to dip these in that. At the same time, I'm going to make this jelly. Now in England, jelly comes in uh, packs which, uh, uh, and it pulls apart into little squares like that. Um, in the United States, I think Jello, a powdery thing, is more common. I think. Well, that does smell very raspberry-like. So, I think the first thing I'm going to do is to start the jelly off. And for that, I need some boiling water. And usually it would be um, half a cup of boiling water and then once it's melted, half a cup of ice cold water. Um, but I'm going to use half a cup of boiling water and only um, a quarter of a cup, 60 millilitres of ice cold water, because I want the jelly eventually to set that little bit thicker than it might usually set. So we'll get half a pint of water. There and we pour that onto the jelly and then we're going to stir that around until it melts. because I want this to be quite thick so that 
um, as I dip the cake in it, it coats it. The other thing that I'm going to do is, usually when they uh, people do this, they toss the entire cake uh, in the icing and then coat it in desiccated coconut. Um, I'm going to probably do um, the top and all the sides and leave the bottoms for the time being and I'm going to do the bottoms later. That's only because it, my view is if I coat them completely and put them on this wire rack as the icing firms up it's going to stick to the wire rack. Right, so our jelly is almost melted. Just a couple of little bits left in there. Okay, so now I'm going to put in some cold water. And here I have a quarter of a cup. So that goes in. I'm going to stir that around. And I'm going to leave that now and let that begin to set and we'll use it before it sets completely. So the next thing to do is to take our icing sugar and pour our cocoa powder in. I'm just going to mix that around a little bit. And then put our butter in as well. That wasn't very clever, was it? And the milk. And then I'm going to put that onto the gently simmering water. until the butter melts and the butter and milk mixing with the icing sugar and the cocoa powder to form a nice silky mixture. And as we dip our chocolate in this, the mixture may begin to um, thicken and if it does it simply has to go back onto the heat to loosen it up again. I do have um, 200 grams of coconut available, but I'm not using all 200 grams at the moment. I've got some in a bowl here. So what I'm going to do is to take one piece, dip it in the chocolate, and pull it up the sides. I'm going to take that out and drop it into the coconut and I'm going to pull coconut up around it like that
and then I'm going to stand it on the tray. So the next one. Okay, uh, so I've coated all the sides except the bottom with chocolate and coconut and now I'm just going to, um, I've softened the, the, the chocolate a little bit and I'm going to try to coat the base of each one. without making too much mess. Now you could do this all in one go, um, but I wasn't in the mood for getting extremely sticky fingers and as I say, I think it may, they may have stuck to the tray somewhat. So, and this is the opportunity just to make sure you get every little bit covered with chocolate. If there's any that you missed before, you can just patch that in. Oops. And then what we want to do is to top it off with coconut and I think we can best do that by dipping it in like that this is the remainder of that first half of the coconut And while the icing is still just that little bit malleable, you can actually just press them if they seem to have lost a bit of shape. They will easily come back. And there we have our first eight and the more traditional style lamingtons. So I'm going to put those to one side and clean up a little bit. Then I'll be back with you and we'll do the uh, strawberry jelly one. Okay, so I'm back with you now. And I showed you how to uh, do these ones, the, the chocolate ones. and. Uh, I coated the bottoms and put coconut on them and then I did the same with the, um, the uh, strawberry jelly ones but I had to wait for the strawberry jelly to begin to set so um, it's, it's set I've just taken them out of the fridge 
because um, I put them in the fridge for the jelly to finish setting and uh, I'll put them back in the fridge because they still need to finish just a little bit more. So let's cut this chocolate one in half and have a look. So that's what it looks like inside and I'll have a taste, first time I've tasted a lamington. Mm. That is very, very good. Um, the cake, I knew the cake would be nice, but that chocolate icing with the coconut is perfect. So now I'm going to try this one. Now with these, I actually dipped them completely in the jelly before it was anywhere near thick enough. So I think some of that liquid is absorbed into the cake. Then I let them stand until the jelly thickened and I, I put some of the jelly on the outside. So as you can see, some of that strawberry flavour has gone into the cake. That also tastes very good. Um, not as strong as the chocolate one. But certainly nice. I think if I'd let the jelly set that little bit thicker before I dunked them for the first time, probably would have been slightly better. So I'll put a note about that on the, the recipe on my blog. So I hope you've enjoyed that, I enjoyed this recipe. It's taken a bit of time because I stopped for dinner part way through. But if you have enjoyed it, please give me the thumbs up on the uh, link below and also click to subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube channel. And uh, I will be back with you with another recipe in the very near future. Until then, happy baking.